So I'm going to be reviewing DIY mushroom cultivation and uh, I flagged a lot of things to... Oh boy is it hot! It's scorching out here. It's, it's unbearable. It's going to be horrible tomorrow. Unless yeah. it rains as it's predicted to. Yeah. Was it tomorrow you were saying it might rain? Anyway, it's a good book. It's not very thick, but it gives you, I think, all the information you need, really. Um, and I learned something new. When I took um, mushroom cultivation in school, um, we did it with the agar, and uh, my instructor made his own fume hood from um, I'm sure what he wanted to use is the Happel filter sort of thing that everybody goes for in the books. But what he used is a kitchen fan uh, fume hood and he put um, plastic around it as I remember and it worked out really well. And so I was trying to do that myself and the plastic I had wasn't thick. I, um, I should really go buy some vapor barrier plastic because I think that's what he and uh, to try to do that because I didn't have um, perfect results but um, it doesn't really matter because I got um, too depressed and I couldn't I didn't end up finishing my project I got so far and I was like ah tomorrow tomorrow until finally I just didn't get it done so I I'll try it another time but I wanted to mention a few parts of the book so Page 42, there's a really cute picture of pink oysters cozy up besides bath toys at our house. So they have their, well they show all sorts of things which I don't necessarily recommend. Um, I wouldn't do it, but they are recommending it. They show um, putting around the hot water heater and stuff, your mushrooms. Um, and. If you have a really humid basement or whatever, then I suppose there's no problem. But there's a lot of examples here where they're using um, humidifiers and stuff like that to bring up the humidity for the mushrooms. And so I wouldn't want to be growing mushrooms in my house unless I had a, a root cellar that was moist anyway, you know, or something like that. I definitely wouldn't want to risk rotting my house apart to grow mushrooms in my house. Yeah. That's just, it seems like such a bad idea. So, uh, but if your mushrooms are going to grow in the shower and your, I mean, it, your bathroom's already should be set up so that it can take some moisture, yeah. then maybe that's a good idea. I don't know. It's pretty cute anyway. Um, page 102. There's a great picture of um, reishi fruits from a laundry basket. Uh, uh, they boiled wood chips for 12 hours, drained and cooled them, inoculated them with five pounds sawdust spawn and two pounds grain spawn, inoculated three weeks indoors in a ventilated plastic bag, then was moved outside and watered for fruiting. So it looks like what they did is they just pulled the bag down um, they had a bag over the laundry basket and they just pulled it down to let it fruit out. It looks awesome. A, a container you could reuse again and again, which is great. So um, I totally want to try that idea sometime when I get the opportunity. And this one I have to read this to you because it was hilarious. Uh, page 114. Uh, the Junk Mail Digester. When I was living in a really dirty artist loft in Arcata, where is that, James? Where is it? Arcata. I thought that's what you said. I couldn't tell you. I'm none plus. I gave James the better celery from like around the outside took the insides up for myself. That was really bitter. Anyway, on um, the other one's just cucumber juice. I drank, I made a big cucumber into juice and I had to drink half, 
didn't have the glass already because it wouldn't fit in there because it was a big cucumber. But I'll drink that eventually. I love drinking cucumber juice. That's it's good. a pleasure. Now I drank the cucumber juice. What's left is the... Oh, the celery. celery. Well, that should be the better one because it's the outside stuff. Anyway, it's not like cucumber stuff. i got to tell myself we were right. Yeah, I know. I had an old dried out bag of oyster sauce spawn. It had never been opened and eventually it got moldy on the upper surface. Determined not to waste it, I tore off the moldy surface, soaked my stash of used brown paper bags in the kitchen sink, tore them up with my unwashed hands, mixed in the crumble up spawn and stuffed it all inside a used plastic bag. <laughs> in a week it was fully myceliated with no sign of contamination and in two weeks it brooded. I gave the bag to my friends who were living in a really dirty punk house in Oakland. <laughs> there are many I guess roommates. Our cat is close by. Must be. Past and present got piles of junk mail, so they went wet the pile down, tore it all up, and mixed it with the contents of the bag in a big plastic bin. The mycelium took it as well. And more junk mail and other paper waste was thrown in regularly, none of it pasteurized. Mushrooms fruited occasionally from the rubbish. <laughs> And after about seven months, it was finally retired to the worm bin, en route to the garden beds. That's awesome. So, I mean, me trying to do everything wrong and still get some mushrooms, I'm going to try that again. But still, um, they really <laughs> did everything wrong here. I don't think anybody would recommend this kind of mushroom cultivation and yet it worked so okay now why did I bookmark this one I couldn't tell you. I bookmarked it for some reason to read something to you, and I can't remember what. Well, fine. I'll just forget about it. In any case, it's worth reading. It, it's um, it's not very thick. It's only well, I suppose 172 pages if you. The back stuff isn't, well, whatever, yeah. And So anyway, it isn't very long. There's a lot of pictures. And um, this came from Picture Butte Library for me. And I'm very thankful because, as you can see, I have a lot bookmarked for myself to go over again. So it was definitely worth borrowing it from my local public library. And I'm thankful that they carted it in from Picture Butte. Which is not very far. Okay. That's Pitcher View. The other one is Pitcher Creek, right? Yeah, the one I talked about yeah. earlier. When I was a kid, I always mixed those two places up. Mm. They're very different. Very different. Anyway. Boy, this heat just wipes a person out. Pretty bad. It's hard to get anything done in it. Mm -hmm. But I guess I managed to get some reading done. It's amazing. And I did a bunch of cross crossword puzzles. I was filling in some of the stuff from before. That's good. I think I got a few. There you go. I knew you'd been James has been teaching me to do crossword puzzles. Yeah. Uh, I don't have the patience for it. A um, lot of it is just me. But he, he tells me, just put it down and go back to it. Hmm. So that's what I can do. Get a bit I can of a fill sleep. in a few words, go away, cooking, doing whatever, come back, do a little more. That's okay. doable. There is a certain degree of creativity involved. So. Hmm. <laughs> There's Your a, a whole lot of frustration there is. involved for me. I don't know how long this crossword puzzle thing is going to yeah. last for me. It's a good way to, if you don't get too frustrated, it's a good way to work out other frustrations. Is it? I think so. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I haven't gotten to that point yet. 
You and I have finished very few of them. Yeah, I we're doing it, it together. Like you start. I think you're better at seeing the big ones without any crosses. But uh, I seem to be able to, once there's a few clues, I see cool. Well, James is amazing at doing um, Scrabble. I can't stand playing Scrabble with him because it's at just after a few moves, he's created some horrible block thing where he has the words all lined up beside we each other. We try to get multiple crosses. It's ridiculous to have to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm not good at getting this. Uh, oh, the triple word words score. Tri and, yeah. No, uh, like where you use up all the stuff. When you're oh yeah, I'm better at that than you, I think. But I still, I, I can't possibly win against you because putting them up side by side like that, you get so many mm -hmm. points. And it's hard for me to do anything. It's hard for me to put my, even if I have a big word to put down, I can't fit it in because you have me all blocked out. That's right. Yeah. I don't intend to do it. That's how it works out. It's really frustrating. But I guess that's just it. I either adapt or I lose. Yeah, I had a friend who was a math major back then. He became a math prof. Now I think he's working as a <coughs> private a private enterprise of some sort. But uh, he always beat me at Scrabble, right? I was an English major. I'd know a lot more words than him, but he could get those big uh, 50 Oh, that's start. what he hit. Yeah. Those are good if you have a Latin kind of vocabulary. The longer words, right? Um, He'd also play backgammon with me, but he didn't play with me, he just stomped me. Yeah. I didn't know how to play backgammon. Yeah, I have no idea how to play that. I think that doesn't even good. look like a board. Yeah, it's weird. I can't believe that that's actually a playing board. I look at that thing and can't make heads or tails. Anyway, there's a lot of strategy involved with the thing. Yeah. So. I'm not enamored of games or games of chat. I'm not a gambler, because as a kid... Oh, is that what that game is? No, it isn't. There's oh. some chance. There's strategy. But oh. The other thing is I don't like games that I don't know the rules and strategies very well. Mm. You just end up being cannon fodder for the person who does. Yeah. So basically, I just don't like board games. Yeah. I can tell you one thing for certain. I'm not a gambler. I noticed I couldn't stand games of chance because there was just no skill involved. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, it just, like bingo, it used to burn me up, right? <laughs> Even though I wasn't buying the cards. That's funny. And I did win once. Did you thought, against him? Oh, you mean this bingo? This bingo. He's on the boat. So I would have been... 10 years old. Yes, I won when I was 10 years old. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I was allowed to win at the time. I think mom had to say she won for me. Oh, this was in the bingo hall. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I took the money and it was $50. Mm -hmm. And uh, which, that's a huge amount of money for a 10 year old. It was like I won the big lottery or something. So anyway, I took that and I bought a fish tank. It's a fish. That's nice. Yeah, second hand. Yeah, they were lovely. This is my first, first fish. Yeah, with us, the bingo was free. Right? Uh -huh. It was just kids entertaining the kids so they didn't commit suicide by diving up the, you know, yeah, trying to make it interesting, diving up, diving up the railway, so, or the railings. So, uh, yeah, um, you got to keep kids I occupied wanna, or. I'm sort of halfway through the voyage and I'm going, I'm going to keep on winning because I deserve it. And by the time the voyage was over, I was cured again. Yeah. It is, nah, it's not going to happen. Yeah. I started figuring it out. You know? Everyone stands How long did it ship. take to s ride those ships? It seems like months, but it probably was like a week or something like that huh. to go from Oh, so you Cape can't, Del. you would have no idea how. No, you know how time is just really expanded when you're a kid? 
but it was a long time, it was several days. We'd go from the south end of Africa all the way to England, so. England was farther north than here. In terms of latitude, most, or roughly the same latitude the south of England. You know, you'd think that wind would be refreshing. Oh, it's not. I opened that back door and the wind was blowing. <laughs> it's like standing in front come. of a, a heater, a dryer vent. That's yeah, right. <laughs> Trying to cool off that way. Yeah. It's terrible. It's like getting wind in off the Sahara. <laughs> yeah. The Samum or whatever they call it. It's just desiccating. <laughs> I feel as though you turn into an instant mummy. You know? There's a word for it. Samuma? Samum. Oh, man, there are many different names for different, oh. many different winds. I don't know if that's the dry hot. I mean, in Italy they call it the wind from the Sahara. I think it's Sirocco. Oh. Sirocco, probably. So they say it. We tend to say it's Sirocco. They I think get that's wind the off the desert there, in Italy. It comes off of the Mediterranean. Yeah. Over the Mediterranean. How would it still be Sahara. dry? That's a good question. Nature. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I believe that's what a symbol is. 